Alright, I have a little custom project to do here for Richard out in BC. So I'm going to capture this with Cam Studio and see how it all goes. I've created a folder here on the desktop called Richard, of course. And he sent me a DWG file. Um, basically it's an airfoil and he wishes me to uh, cut this out of foam. So I'm going to go through all the steps. So we're going to open up Aspire. It's uh, software that I use basically to start with. And we're going to open up his file, Airfoil. And there it is. And this particular file, it, uh, it has multiple vectors in it. If we uh, First thing I want to do is look at the dimensions to make sure that his diagram is to scale because I sometimes get stuff that's not and it doesn't, you know, it might be, I'm in millimeters and somebody sends it to me in inches and it doesn't convert in the software when I load it and it's all out of whack. So I'm looking at the measurements here. It says 265.96 and if I look at the top left, we're at 265.95, so close enough. And we'll look at the depth of it. And we're at 30.8, and it looks like it's 30.8 profile, so that all looks good. So I'm happy with that. Now, as I mentioned, the vectors, uh, this everything here is a vector. That's a vector. That's a vector. That's a vector. Every single black spot that you see on here is a vector. So I just want to grab the airfoil itself and get rid of the junk. So hopefully it's not going to intersect with anything. It looks like we have that. We're going to copy it. And uh, we can uh, start a new file. So we'll go up here and new file. All right, and we're looking at a grid here. This is 500 millimeters by 500 millimeters. That's too large. So we'll scoot on up here to the left. And we will grab that and change that to about 300. Just a little bit bigger than, uh, than what the piece is that we're going to cut. And 40 is plenty high. And we'll hit OK. And there it is. So that is the piece of work that we're going to start with. So uh, we're going to paste this in here. And there it is. I'll just zoom back a bit. Perfect. And it's facing the wrong way. Everything that I cut has to be... I always cut from the aft end of an airfoil first. So this is kind of facing the wrong way. We're going to have to flip that thing around. So we'll go up here to... Where am I looking? We'll go up here to the mirror image. what I'm doing at this point probably having a drink of coffee I'm editing the audio in afterwards so yeah we don't want a, the nose this way we want the aft end at the left side of our block so we're going to mirror this thing so it's already selected and highlighted as you can see so let's mirror it sometime today would be good uh, if I don't if I cut it this way it'll make a mess we won't use that so here we go flip it over finally I decided to do that and there it is so now we've got to center that piece into the center of our foam block, which essentially is where our white square is in the middle, our rectangle. So we will take that, select it, and drop that into the center. And that is it. It's done. Perfect. So we'll take this uh, piece. As you can see, there it is. And we will highlight this piece. And that will grab our vectors. And we're going to export those vectors into another format. So basically what we'll do is we will uh, go into File and Export. And we will take the selected vectors and we're going to make a DXF file. And since I'm already in the folder, Richard, as you can see, we're going to call it the same thing. Get rid of the DWG and we will save it in there as such. And it's done. So I'm done with this file and no I'm not going to save it because if I need to alter it again I'll leave it in the original state that's typically what I do so there it is there's the DWG which we determined is the scale and this is the new DXF file that I've created from it uh, the next software I use is DevFoam Pro and we'll wait here that loads up and close this dialog box here and we'll start from scratch so we'll go file and open now I have to go down to the drop down menu it looks like I am already well where am I we're going to open up a DXF file like so and we'll select Richard oops not there we go 
and there's the file that we created, the DXF file. And we'll select that guy and open. All right, so here it is in DevFoam. Looks pretty much the same as it did in Aspire. And I can render uh, NC code for the CNC machine and Aspire, but I prefer to use this program. It, there's a, it does a lot of stuff that Aspire doesn't. Uh, as you can see here, I'm going to highlight this. You can see it flashing green and red. I want to take that and render all these step points around this thing to give us a nice smooth contour. There's a lot of stuff up here that we can use. Uh, I'm not going to use it. I'm just going to create a three, new 3D part. And there we are. We're set up to create a new 3D part. And we know the dimensions. He's indicated to me via uh, email that he wants a 180 millimeter wide piece. So we'll set that to 180 millimeters wide. And we'll look at a 3D preview of it. And I'll just spin this around a couple times. The resolution is not set up really high in this software for viewing. It's just a resource pig and gives me a basic idea. It looks like a, an airfoil. It's just not going to be as clean as it will be when it's in the final product, just under viewing. So we're going to cut. Now there's a couple of things here we can do. We, all of this information is already saved in the software. Uh, these are all the parameters for my tower, the distance between the towers, the how much travel I have and so on. So we'll just have to go down here and uh, hit next. All right, and there we go. Now this is the uh, thing that I do pay attention to, and this is the kerf value. Uh, basically when you're cutting foam, it's melting away the foam as it cuts with the hot wire, and this has to be predetermined. I know that at the temperature that I'm running the wire at and the wire diameter, that a two millimeter kerf is expected. If uh, I run the wire hotter, it's going to be a bigger kerf. If I run it cooler, it'll be a smaller kerf. But two millimeters at the settings I have right now on my Variac transformer for the heat, it's uh, just about right. And basically, that shows you in the red line exactly where it's going to be. Now, if I change that up to 10 millimeters, say I'm running a giant wire and it's really hot, well, you can see it needs to cut way out there in order to maintain that profile that I want at the exact dimensions that we've created it in. We'll set it back to 2, and we'll look at a 3D preview, and essentially it shows you the red is the hot wire path, the yellow that's under there that you can see if I tip it up here just right, that is the foam, and because it's, if I can get a good shot of it here, you might be able to see, you can actually see the gap between the, where the hot wire travels and the foam, so that just gives you an idea roughly what we're looking at for a core, and it looks good here. All right. So we've created the cut path, we've got the curve set, now we're going to take a look at this. We're going to optimize the uh, settings here. This is a bird's eye view of basically my CNC table. We'll optimize the placement of everything and we'll test the, the path limits to make sure that I'm within the uh, traveling distance that is uh, on my CNC. If it doesn't, that uh, if it, I don't get a test okay, then I can't go to the next step. So basically in this preview, 3D preview, mode it'll do a cut simulation and I'll just spin this around so we can get it the axis correct so we can get a better view of it I can show the wire not show the wire show the block of foam or not that yellow block is the block of foam all right so we will rewind that that sets it resets it back to zero and we'll hit the start button and this is actually going to do a lead in to start the cutting process and the white line that goes across the screen there you can see is actually demonstrating how it gets cut Pretty, uh, pretty cool to watch. I'm not in here a whole lot anymore because I just know how it all works. But I thought you guys might like to have a look at it and see, see what it looks like in the software anyhow before it starts, before it actually hits the CNC machine. And it'll just cut along there. I can just speed this up and make it really fast because I don't want to wait seven, eight minutes for it to complete its cut. And that basically looks like it there and we'll get rid of the wire marks that's basically the, the path that it will cut out and that'll give you an idea what it looks like the finished piece that's it and this here button will 
show me the, the foam block dimensions. It gives me all this information so that if I want to jot it down, I can, just so I know how big to cut the blank. It uh, gives me a, uh, a little bit of extra tolerances on it. So that's good. I'm happy with that. We're going to go down to the next button. And this is where we can do a whole bunch of other stuff. I'm not going to get into all of it. Basically, all I want to do here is just show you that I can uh, click on that and I can take this cutting project. And here's the information, the foam size, the CNC size. It tells me, it shows you all the distances that, that the carriages can travel, the distance from the left carriage, and so on and so forth as, a, as I have the, the block placement and so on. So I can just copy that if I want it to and drop down, open up a notepad, a word, or something along that lines, and save that file in a folder, and uh, I'll have that as a quick reference should I need it again. But uh, for today, I don't need to do all that. I'm just rambling on. So we're not going to save it, and we'll close that and get out of there. Okay, so we're going to create a... 4-axis G-code, as you might have missed it. I was up there, clicked on the top left to create the 4-axis G-code. And we're going to give it a name. We're going to the proper folder. Of course, we're going to call it Airfoil, the same as the rest of the files. Get rid of the uh, last three digits there. And hit save. And that is finished. So that's our 3-axis, or 4-axis G-code created for the CNC machine. And the last piece of software I use... Uh, not on this computer, but I have a hard copy of it here just so I can play with it. Uh, it's on my other PC, which is connected directly to the CNC machine, is uh, Mach 3. And this is uh, version 2.0. So by default, I have to hit the reset button because it's a safety built into the software, so it doesn't take off when you first flash up this thing. So we can load the G code here, or we can load it from down below. We'll just go into the folder. I think I was already there. There we go. And that's the uh, G code that we created. And we will drop that in there. So you can see up here, you want to make sure uh, that, well, this is the G code over here that the cursor is showing you now. Um, feed rate is set at right now at six. And I believe that's six millimeters per minute. So that will go to the default setting that I have programmed in the software, which would be at 200. And uh, this is the profile. It looks basically the same as what we saw in the uh, other two previous. Uh, pieces of software. So we'll start the G code and off it goes. It's, it automatically went, the feed rate went to 200. And every one of those lines of code is the basically giving the uh, CNC input as to where to go with it. And that is it. Pretty dry and uneventful video, but it just gives you a little insight on what all happens prior to taking a chunk of foam and throwing it in a CNC machine. Thanks for watching and uh, have a good night.